And welcome back to You Were Joined 120. I am Jeff Cliff, and this is a series of 120 videos of things that I learned as a student of computer science at the University of Virginia. And today we're going to be talking about another kind of life advice thing, uh, which is not, strictly speaking, related to math or computer science, but it's something that I kind of picked up, uh, which I have found to be very useful in my life, which is that uh, it is useful when you plot out, and I'd encourage you, whenever you, like, school, one of the things that school teaches you is to think in terms of semesters and to think in terms of this kind of period of time on the short, not really that short term, but you know, a couple of months ahead where you think, okay, well, every day, you know, on Tuesdays I'm going to go to this class, on the other Tuesdays or Thursdays I'm going to go to this other class, and, you know, over the course of the week I'm spending, you know, whatever amount of time per class, and, you know, every week this, this, this routine is being presented to myself where this much of my day is being spent with school, this much of my day is being spent with work, and you kind of nail that down for months at a time. And over longer periods of time, you make adjustments to kind of, you know, take other classes or to work a little bit more so you can afford to take other classes. And, you know, you, you pile things on and you take extracurricular activities and you involve yourself in social situations. Maybe you get a girlfriend or a boyfriend or whatever it is you do. Uh, but, you, you know, everything takes time. And especially classes take time. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go. But you're, you're continually adding kind of commitments for time commitments on what it is that you expect for yourself to do. And it's very easy to get to the point where your whole day is just booked. Or especially once you factor in things like eating, showering, sleeping, uh, and other activities uh, you know, that you could you know, partake in, uh, that you're, you're basically full. Your, your day is done. You're spoken for. You're, you've got your five classes. You come home, you do your homework. You take a sleeping pill or whatever, you go to sleep. You know, and then you wake up and you do this again, and over and over and over again. And that's your whole, you know, four months or six months or whatever it is you do. And it is fruitful to leave a small percentage of your time for other, for none of the above. Going back to the multiple choice video, uh, for, for the new video, for haven't been determined yet, for we will uh, use this time for locally important things, for things that are important that week, for things where you are inspired to do something. Use that 10% for other than school activities. Maybe it doesn't have to be 10%. Maybe it can be 5%. Maybe it can be 1%. You know, you have 168 hours per week to do things with. And you are adding stuff on top of other things so that, you know, you say 40 hours a week. Treat, treat school like a full-time job. 40 hours a week of school, uh, or maybe, you know, you take another job on top of that. You get 40 hours a week of work, and then, say, 40 hours a week of, uh, you know, other, and then the rest is sleep. So, you, you really have to start budgeting your time. Be very careful so that every day you get a little bit of time that you can spend somewhere that isn't the mental space of your school. You know, take a book, read a book, go to your library, pull out a book that isn't related the stuff you are learning, or it at least isn't completely related to the stuff you're learning. Join a hackerspace. Show up at the hackerspace and just spend time there. Look at what other people are doing. Involve yourself with other people's lives. Think about things that are not specifically related to your field uh, and are not just being social with people in your field. Try to you know, go for a walk, go for a run, go for a swim, go wake up in the middle of the night, have a you know, cup of tea. You know, do something relaxing and it isn't uh, absolutely necessary for you to do so. Whatever it is, make sure that it's a consistent thing per week, per hour, per day, whatever it is. Figure out the, the amount of time that you can allocate to it that's in your budget. Because, you know, don't get me wrong, I've had to work, you know, your two full-time jobs. I've, I've, I, Outlook, when I was in Outlook, I, I had two full-time jobs and a part-time job on top of it. So, you know, you can definitely get to the point where in order to get by, you have to really, you know, budget around, you know, just survival with as much work as possible. You know, I've been there. I understand that. But over the long period of time, you can make adjustments to your life. If you're lucky, not everyone does get this chance, of course, but I would say probably most people on Earth do get the chance to make these little changes, to allocate a little bit of time for things that are not necessary, for things that are... Uh, would allow you that if an opportunity came up, that you would be able to take advantage of it and then dedicate this 10% to that opportunity. 
and then that might be your window towards a bigger thing. Google used to, I don't think they have this policy anymore, but it used to be the case that it was like 10% time that you could spend on a Google project that was not the one that you're supposed to be working on. And that 10% of the time you could kind of distract yourself by doing anything you want, and they'd even fund it. They would pay you for it. So, for example, things like Gmail came out of this 10% time that people thought, oh, wouldn't it be neat if Google provided a, a free email service? Because remember, email service used to have a cost. It used to be that unless you were something like Hotmail, which had really crappy service, that your email service was you know, something that you paid for. I used to pay for an email account. Google changed that by giving free email addresses to everybody, for better or worse. Same thing with, I think Google Maps did the same, something very similar. And you know, a lot of Google projects have come out of this 10% time. And, but in general, if you can get to the point where you can have a little bit of personal space and personal time, this concept of personal time, this concept of time that is spent doing things for you, get to that point in your life. Uh, if you have a family, if you have kids, you know, it's going to be hard for you to kind of cut that piece of your life out again. Uh, but even in that case, you know, encourage your kids at least to have a little bit of, you know, my time or whatever. You know, get to the point where you can have space in your life for creative action, for creative activity, for personal space, for privacy, for personal space and personal time. Privacy and time. Change your own life so that you can have flexibility in it, so that you can react to situations when they come up, so that when, for example, something like Bitcoin comes up and it didn't exist before, you can start to dedicate a little bit of time to it and learn about it. You can think about it. You can do things in relation to it. If you find that over time that it is actually accomplishing something, you know, take that from your 10% time and move it into the rest of your life and actively, consciously start, you know, budgeting your time around it. But again, the important part is to always keep a little bit of flexible time available so that you can react to things as they come up. Uh, obviously, you're not always going to be able to do this, but see if you can. Uh, so examples of in my life where this has come into effect is I am a musician and I really like to be able to to not just think in terms of math and in numbers, as per the number, uh, you know, thinking in numbers video, but also in terms of music and in terms of experience and emotion. And being able to, you know, step up away from the calculus and step up away from the textbooks, to sit at a piano and play, has really enabled me to focus harder and longer on the things that I had to be doing. And, you know, because it, you know, when the, the timer went off, I was ready to go back. I was enthusiastic about it. I was kind of more pumped about it, I can stay up longer, I can focus and accomplish more with it. You'll find you'll be more refreshed, more able to do things, more able to do that 40 to 80 or 90 or 120 hours a week or whatever it is you do, if you have a little bit of time to just unwind a little bit, to just breathe a little bit, to have a little bit of space where you can bounce back that isn't just being unconscious and asleep. Because yes, you can use your subconscious to accomplish things. Yes, you can... You can you know, do things in your sleep and use your dreams to get ideas and to, to do all these things. But even when you're awake, even when you're not necessarily at work, you can get your subconscious working on things by doing simple, relaxing, or possibly uh, creative behavior. Uh, as long as you do it consistently, and as long as you're, you're, you know, you're able to, to dedicate that amount of time so that you're always doing it, get it into habit, get it as a ritual or a habit so that you're constantly doing so it's part of your life. Design your life. Don't just let the conditions of your life just say what you participate in. Don't just let the bureaucracies in your life define how you live. Choose it. Take that bit of your life back. Uh, with time, make the trade-offs, make the decisions, choose your life and how you live it. And I would suggest this 10% be part of that choice because you will you will not regret having that little bit of flexibility to be able to, to focus and you know take it out of your sleep time. You know if, if you're already getting a full time sleep or a full night sleep, you know give a little you know, take a little bit of sleep time and do something unique with it every day. But make sure that it's a consistent 10% or a consistent part of your week that you can look forward to as you're focusing on something that you don't necessarily want to do so that you can get to the point where you're willing and interested in doing it. As usual, if you have any questions or would like to give examples of the, how this 10% time 
time has helped in your life, feel free to post it anywhere where this video is posted. Uh, as usual, there will be a Bitcoin donation address in the bottom here to fund this video series and whiteboard marker supplies. Hopefully you enjoy. See you next video.